listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline connects you with experts from all over the world to help you take charge of your career, your business, and your life. Wrap along with us. Visit drjacqueline.com to learn how to become a guest or a sponsor. And now, the doctor is in. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. We are so excited to have you on this marathon day of broadcasting eight shows. This is show number six, and I am so excited because my friend Amina is here with me today. This is Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline presents Pet Psychic Amina. I am your host, executive producer, director, and broadcast engineer, Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. Let's bring out Amina to join us. Hello, hello. Hey. I love Friday. It's so good to see you. Well, you look so festive. I love your laughs. Thank you. It's actually a very long dress. I was going to say, I probably should have gone with dress. It looks like it flows. <laughs> So, yeah, sometimes I'm actually standing here in a ball gown, which is kind of crazy, but uh, with my slippers on, very attractive. See, and, and the great thing about, about Zoom, you have no idea what's on waist down. Could be nothing to everything. See, you're wearing a ball gown. I promise, <laughs> mine is not nothing. So, <laughs> too much information for the show. No, not for your show. You, you do cover everything beautifully, and I got to listen to last uh, week's show and everything it was it was really really fun um i i wish i had more time uh, the nice thing is you put the earbuds on you go for a walk and and you get to really catch up on such amazing topics that you're covering so that's that's why you and i do this because we really hit it off from the beginning and 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 i love the new hairdo i, I love it so. oh thanks i just keep cutting it shorter and shorter <laughs> I walk by the mirror and I go, oh, chop, chop, chop. So, so what I'm going for is that uh, this side will be longer than this side. Like it'll be, oh, I had I had a side like that before, but um, I never did it myself. So that's what the okay. difference is. So. Yeah. Um, this is all I got. I, I, <laughs> when I was younger, you know, tried to have some curl. My dad would just do the, uh, okay, nice, honey. It was terrible. Because, you know, you, you put in the little pink rods, the really tight ones because that's all I could afford. And it, I, my theory as a teenager was it's going to last longer. No, I look like I was trying to be African-American and I was just too white for that. So it was a bad, <laughs> it was a bad look. So you at least look fabulous. We learn as we get older, don't, don't we? I, well, I've had perms like way back. In fact, my mom has a picture exactly. downstairs and I have like giant fingernails. It's like, oh my gosh, who did I think I was? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, and there's documentation. Luckily, no social media to prove that any of that happened. <laughs> That's so true. So true. So how was your day off last week? Um, I, I actually had almost the whole week. Um, so my daughter and I went to Southern California. I used to live in Los Angeles area. And so my best friend is down there and we, oh, you should see the pictures. Oh my gosh, the pictures. Uh, we went to a lot of gardens. I love plants. Of course, I'm talking to them all. So um, it was, and you know, everywhere we go, everybody's like, why do we always see wildlife when you're around? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so cutest little turtles and, and all that kind of stuff. And it's so funny because I was walking in the store with somebody's, uh, a friend or something, and I'm distracted. And she's like, what are you doing? I said, oh, sorry, that dog's talking to me over there. And and animals that know or can feel it and they're spoken to, this is the biggest thing I ever tell any pet owner. Talk to your pets in English or Spanish or Russian. I don't care. Whatever's your language, talk to them. Because then when they need help, they're better at expressing it in a language that you, that translates. It's like saying, okay, I'm going to go to Italy, but I'm only going to speak English and everybody has to speak English. Americans mm -hmm. have traditionally had this issue with traveling that they think everybody yes. should speak English. We're a little <clears throat> arrogant and bossy, um, but it's it, it's the same issue with pets. If you don't teach them language, and and I mean talk to them, talk to all of them. I see I have clients that have reptiles. It's a very teeny brain, <laughs> but <laughs> they get the feeling still of what that means and what because in the animal kingdom. It's all about, hmm, what does that look like? What are they doing? How are they acting? Because if you're going to watch a wolf and you're the rabbit, 
you're just going to run. <laughs> I'm not going to say, right. but you also might teach your babies to hide and that kind of stuff because the wolf hadn't seen you yet. So it's about teaching language to your own pets and all of that kind of stuff. I, I can't stress this enough. Talk to them, talk to them. I mean, think about if you had a human child and you never spoke to them or hardly ever go do this, get me that. I mean, if they were the slave, the servant or whatever, but there's no relationship there. There's no understanding. There's no comprehension of, well, what did you really mean? Um, We've all had misunderstandings about something somebody said. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of one that's really common, but I'm, I'm sure we'll come up with it, where you, you say something that can be translated a few ways. Um, I'm dying. Uh, you're, you're literally dying, or this moment you're dying, or you're dying about that topic. Uh, it's English, especially people are, in any language, is complicated. It's called yes, so please, that's very please, true. Please talk to your pets because when you get to a vet, when you get to a trainer, when you get to a psychic, I don't care which one of us professionals you go to, your animals will do better because they'll be able to show us what they're talking about and because we're tuned in. It's our training to do. Well, I want you to know that I've taken what you said to heart and uh, two things. So we have a plant that my mom got for Mother's Day. We went to a restaurant and so the plant was, and I said this this morning, the plant was on a table over there and it just didn't look like it was doing too well. So I started talking to it and I named it Daphne. And I said, Daphne, I don't think you like it over here. Plus you're dry. The, you need some water. So I started giving Daphne water and I moved Daphne from where she was to another location. And all of the leaves are up like this and there's new buds. And so I go down and I talk to her. And then I had a, a little silverfish in my bathroom. And I remember what you said about the spiders. And I said, listen, it's okay that you're here. Just do me a favor. Don't go on my bed and please don't go in my clothes. Yeah, don't need my dress. <laughs> right. Other than that, you and I will be okay. So I named him Dan. And uh, for three days, Dan was like, it, like three square feet. He was still between the bedroom and the bathroom. And I'd have to walk over Dan to where I was going. And I'd be like, Dan, it's okay that you're there. Remember what we agreed to. So I looked it up and silverfish don't have to eat for a year but they have to have water mm. so i saw yesterday poor dan is no longer with us he somehow he ended up upside down well he was on the end of his life so that's why he didn't move and oh sorry talk to bugs too um uh so and it's a very very short conversation we're talking you know instinct um, um the insect world is very much on instinct you know i need food i need to Body, I need I need it home. I need a mate. Um, so th what you're describing and what I feel is is yeah, Dan, Dan was on his last leg, uh, literally, and and so that you don't see the movement. He doesn't need to eat. He doesn't need because it's bugs and um, these types of an animals in general. If you go to the carnivores, you go to um, any of the really cognizant ones, they will literally leave the pack if they're in a pack or whatever, and and go off and die on their own. Um, and that because they become, if you're talking a pack animal, uh, you're, they become a liability because they are not able to get out of the way. They're not able to run away from predators, you know, blah, blah, blah. So they put the pack. So a lot of times animals will leave and, and die alone um, because they know that they are part of the ecosystem and they're going, their body becomes soil. Their body becomes somebody else's food and their babies and all that kind of they, they don't think about this stuff. It just is. Um, it's not a plan and, and that kind of stuff. So a lot of them will go off on their own. I see a lot of this historically, and I'm no expert at all. And I, and I mean all respect because I, I absolutely love the culture. But in the Native American culture, you will see that in, in their tribes. In, 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 and I'm talking indigenous people and that kind of stuff. And I, again, my education here is very little. But you see that in, in even sometime of humanity and they say, no, you know, my life is done. I'm over and their older family, you know, goes away and, and kind of does that type of stuff. Is it still done? Yes. In some of the rural places, I'm sure it's, it's still done. But um, could you imagine how many Americans would have to, I don't know, find a space on their own to, I was like, no, I live in Los Angeles. Where am I going to find, or New York and find my own little space? Well, right. Wish for a pandemic and nobody will be in the park. <laughs> and I think 
been there a while. I think you were right on about Dan because when I looked it up, um, silverfish start out like with a whitish color, mm. and then as they get older, they get more silvery until they turn like a blackish. And this was sort of like a silver black. Wow! Wow! See? Yeah, there it is. Dan's not with us. Yeah, not with not not with us. And what I I constantly remind people. Um, the biggest questions, as I always say, is, well, what's it like to work with you? Well, I don't know. I don't work with me, <laughs> but <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, but um, that I only say what is supposed to be somebody listening, somebody's there, or the person I'm reading for needed to hear that. I get a lot of tears because I I move the heart, I hope, because you're going to remember it better. You're going to remember it better if, if I move your heart towards change. Um, I don't judge. I don't uh, crucify you for making a choice to put your animal down or, or not. No, that that's not my place to be your judge and jury. I wasn't there. Have I been faced with these same choices? Absolutely. Did it kill me? Absolutely. Did I wait too long to get medical treatment for one of my pets? It just, it eats me alive. I am human and everybody makes mistakes. I'm, I'm sure you have probably not logged on exactly on time for your podcast at least once and you go, wait a minute, technical dif difficulties or. Oh, I've, I've definitely had bloopers. That's for sure. Uh, there you go. You got to put all those together. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> I know. I just need someone to go and get all the bloopers out of the different things. But yeah, sometimes I've, uh, I'm supposed to spotlight someone and I spotlight myself and I'm like, oh, what am I doing there? <laughs> <laughs> or I'm checking on social media to see people's comments and, and the commercials run over and I should have, yes, there's, yes, it's just the yeah. way it goes. And, and, and the fun part about being live is that, you know, you got, you got your little girl something or your dog tail goes by. I mean, YouTube or uh, what is it? Zoom has just opened up a plethora of, of wow, that was real. <laughs> that really, really happened, I'm, you know. The ones you see online where somebody posts and says, you know, their husband walked by with no pants and you're like, honey, I'm live. Oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, we don't want That's too much information, dear. <laughs> yes. And, and there are a lot of pets that walk into a room or climb yep. on somebody and yep. it's just, it's just the way it is. We just roll with it. Well, yeah. And I've had the cats walk across the table and you know, go, no, you're not paying attention to me. Um, and it's like, well, you know, it, it, it is what it is. But if I have anything overall to say to everybody is be kind to yourself. You know, know your your humanity is there. If you make a change, that's the important part. We're not perfect. We're not going to do it perfect. Um, I always, always want to say, talk to your animals. Talk to your kids, too. That would be lovely. But it, when you communicate on whatever, whatever level that is, um, they get it. Uh, you're going to get animals that, that know Spanish really well because that's your language or, or Farsi or whatever. English from Britain. It's very different from English in the U.S. We have a lot of slangs. I used to use a lot of them. I want you to be genuine and your animals will be genuine. But today I really, I really want to talk about um, a really tough subject that I've had to deal with in the last two weeks. For some reason, it's it's been my clients go to and you start seeing a trend and you go well, wait a minute what's up so this is about end of life and i'm not talking about a sick animal I, I deal with that a lot and when is it the thing this is time to get your vet involved of course and your choice of what you're willing to do i've seen paralyzed animals and the, and the, the family wants to work with them they want to do the medical they can't afford to do the medical what I'm dealing with clients um the last the last three completely has been aggression, putting them down because they're mean or biting, or the neighbors have complained and we're going to get um, animal control out and they're going to take and confiscate your animal. So just one woman called the night before the dog and it was a, a bully breed, so it was pit bull, and um, they have a bad reputation anyway, but the was it time? She and her son, um, who was a teenager, but still, this this dog was with them since the puppyhood, and she just wanted to know if there was anything else. So I I am the last call for her. She she called me right before they had an appointment to bed the next day. Um, 
these are emergencies. This is, this is life and death. And there's a lot I need to know about um, many things. I want one time in 15 years, let me be just that specific in that time, I walked into an animal that was truly ill, mentally ill. And so there wasn't going to be a recovery, a new training, um, something that could be done to help this dog get some balance. Because sometimes it's diet. And you can see people who, uh, if their entire diet is Twinkies and Ho-Hos and Pop-Tarts and chaser of soda, they're probably not doing very well physically and emotionally and health-wise. So we're gonna, I'm going to take you back to, okay, what's he like? What's he eating? How much exercise? And that type of stuff. And this, this dog was actually scheduled by the vet already for the next day to be euthanized. He, I think he's eight, so not terribly old, but just out of control. And what I was telling her is that, first of all, he, he's got a dietary issue and he's got this, but you're not giving him enough exercise. So he's chasing the neighbors when he gets out the door and he's doing this, he's doing that. And they didn't really understand the breed they had. So I do talk a lot about pack mentality and, and empowering the mom to be the pack leader and not the dog and and not her teenage son and her found out her son's an athlete so i was like okay if you're an athlete uh, i bet you run <laughs> somewhere or go for lots of walks take the dog with you because uh, a child an adult and a dog who are exercised and fed, fed healthy food will do better listen better and it's a process is it going to happen tomorrow no but this dog had nothing chemically medically wrong with it and you were going to put it down because you're worried about a lawsuit and this dog hadn't bitten anybody yet so let me really really stress that it is about being a team pack member and she needed to hear that yes you're in charge yes you can set the rules yes you can save this dog's life because she loved this dog loved this dog so it was a really big deal um a message or two from oh, i need to talk to you now and, and I make room for those as soon as I can, because if we can save a life, then that's that's important. Sometimes it's time, it's time to go to the vet. But this wasn't that issue. This dog was like six. So, so question, question I have for you. So I, my dogs have all passed away, but I had one dog that would always growl at men mm. and would even snip and bite. And I thought for a while about putting her down, which I didn't do, but it was, it was a tough decision because she definitely had anger issues. And then I learned that she had been abused by her breeder. Yeah, no, I, I'm sorry. I already heard the yeah. answer before you said it. <laughs> uh, um, and, and the good part is the more I'm connected with the human, the faster I can hear, hear the, the answer before, before you get, because puppies in spirit, of course. Um, but yeah, when you don't know their history or let's take anybody who's a drug addict, a human, and or uh, abusive as a, as a person, there's something back there. And it can be nutrition. It can be as, as complicated as you eat Twinkies every day and your body and your brain are not being fed properly and, and you kind of get into a psychosis or, or whatever. Um, but it can be environment. It can be taught. Um, we, we hear all the time, I know when I was um, doing psychology as my minor, you hear all the time about a, um, a, a child who is abused will abuse and what, whatever that manifests, physical, sexual, whatever. And so it just terrifies me for, for those people to be set up with that expectation because I don't know about you, but when I was little, I heard it all the time. I took psychology as my minor and you read about it all the time and I'm thinking, no, no, nobody is set up predetermined to always take this one path. We have free will. We have free will, but we need help. We need help. And so, yes, do I advocate a, a therapist? Absolutely. I don't care what you, I 90% of the time am really in a therapist position. I am going to cheer you on. I'm going to give you a 900 choices, not really, but you'll feel like it because I don't live in your home. I don't live in your life. So I'm going to give you a plethora of choices so that when you go, oh, well, that didn't work. Oh, I don't know what to say. She only said, do this, this, and this. Well, 
that's not right for everybody. So if it's um, you need a trainer, get a trainer. If you need better food, and, and I, I pretty much talk about food and diet and exercise all the time. This couple, this woman and her son, again, I find out her son's a football player and a teenager. And I said, go for a run. I'm sure you run a lot <laughs> because you <laughs> play football. You know, you got to run down the sail, you know, down the other right. And so take the dog with you. And if he can't do it in the beginning, when we adopted our shepherd, he'd never run much. And I, I put him on a bike and, um, and he saved my life. And that's a whole other conversation. But his pads on his feet weren't, weren't rough. He didn't have calluses. I, I don't, they don't make shoes that you can run in for dogs that are safe. So we had to do it a little at a time, not only just for me, because I had had a head on car accident and I got a lung infection in the recovery. And so I needed to take these deep breaths and, and the doctor said, just get out. And, and I don't jog. So I thought, Oh, we'll take the dog on the, sh on the, on the bike. And we, we did that for years. And then if anybody knows what agility is, is we competed in agility, running ramps and all that kind of stuff. We got that good. And he got that good at commands because if you're on a bike and he's on a leash, you have to learn, no, don't touch the spokes. <laughs> no, still don't touch the spokes. And they have all kinds of tools that keep the dog in a certain place and all that kind of stuff. Do it. It makes good health. Go for a walk. And when I first, right after my accident, I could only go the block. And so we went a block. And then the, guess what? Three months later, I could go two blocks and four months later. But in that process, I got a lung infection because I was so sick. I was I was sitting, I was bedridden. And he made me, he'd look at me, those you know, sad puppy eyes. Oh, please do you know, you know this look. Please do you know. And I'd get out there and guess what? It made me do take these deep breaths, which healed my lungs. Mm. So you don't know why, because I, I had two teeny little kids when I adopted this shepherd who had never been around people. He'd been abandoned in a yard, purebred, tattooed. I got a hold of the breeder. She was, she was furious <laughs> to say the least that this expensive, you know, thousands, I think he was a $5,000 dog and they just dumped him in the yard because they, they just couldn't bother anymore. And they moved and, and literally left him in the yard with a 16 foot deep, eight five foot wide septic tank hole where they'd moved the septic tank and left the hole and this dog was just left in the backyard and and had a metal water bowl in 90 degree temperatures oh my gosh that's yeah. so painful i've never been on on a leash i had a four and a five year old i got him on a leash walked out and went oh god i have three <laughs> so I've got the kids hanging on to my pants and of course my uh four-year-old locked the keys in the car and oh my gosh. <laughs> I was like, oh, isn't this fun? I'm in a town we just moved into, so we didn't have a house yet. And this was the house that we were by. I was like, could anything else go wrong? I'm sure there's hail somewhere in the summer. Well, you know, when you ask that, you're setting yourself up so that something else could go wrong. But uh, and, and you know what? It's a hilarious story. And that's kind of where I live. And I was like, well, this is not fun. We went by this lady who had one of the um, wireless uh, home phones, you know, with a with a antenna thing and she was out watering. And I said, can I borrow your phone? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, so it's called AAA. <laughs> well, that was good. You knew who to call. You got the yeah. job done. Who so Isn't that yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, it is. I just realized we never went to commercial. Oh my so, God, this is our so, problem every time. And I, I'm blaming you this time. <laughs> all right. Yes, it is my fault because I'm the producer. So, all right, I'm taking us to break. Stay with us here with Pet Psychic Amina. We'll be right back. The session that we had with BCAT was really entertaining and enlightening. We were able to put together some very specific steps that we as individuals can take. And it was really fun to all come together and see sort of where we're going as a team and how we can all get there together. We had a tremendous experience with the BCAP partners. One of the challenges that we have as an organization is to make sure that we have the right people in the right chairs doing the right thing. To do that well, you have to have synergy. You can try to dream up ways to make sure that your group does that, or you can rely on experts. We would recommend BCAP partners to anybody who's looking to take their organization to the next level. Thank you. 
It's what we do together that counts. The Big Alliance Story, a true story about faith over adversity, perseverance, and entrepreneurship. Read Earl's story and how he became an entrepreneur. Available on Amazon, Kindle, and Audible.com. For more information, contact Earl Hurd at earlhurd at BicAlliance.com or call 1-800-460-4242. I'm Dr. Jacqueline. Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline presents A Better You. And here to tell us more is the creator of A Better You, Al Sini. Al, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dr. Jacqueline. It's always a pleasure working with you and uh, everyone out there. You know, you might be a coach working with individuals professionally or personally, or you might be a consultant working with businesses, or you might be a trusted advisor specializing in an area like finance, let's say, or the law or healthcare, uh, whatever of those roles you relate to, you all have one thing in common, and that is you're working every day to help people become better versions of themselves, a better you. And uh, Dr. Jacqueline's A Better You program is an opportunity for you to express your expertise in a particular area for 15 minutes in front of an audience of people who are looking for help from people like you. Yep. So, Dr. Jacqueline, maybe you can tell everybody how they can learn more about this. It's so easy. You go to a betteryou.tv and you sign up to book your session. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. You're watching Rapping with Dr. Jacqueline presents Pet Psychic Amina, and we are back for more discussion. You know, I wanted to let you know I started doing something today. I, I think it was last week I started standing for all my shows. Great. And so uh, now I've added in this little dumbbell. So on the breaks, I'm doing bicep curls. <laughs> because i have this watch on that's telling me you would you know you haven't burned enough calories for today so there you go there you go yeah i love it with our phones um i i've noticed i start carrying it around even in the house when the weather's bad because it's like wait i didn't take four steps today and and yes so when we went to southern california we were walking all these beautiful gardens and parks and the last one it rained on us and uh my girlfriend's like oh let me give you new socks because i went to her house afterwards and i said no no my shoes are wet so you're going to give me new socks and i'm getting those wet and i'm just gonna no let's just let's just go with soggy shoes <laughs> right now but <laughs> people don't realize cloud coverage is the best time to take the most amazing pictures it's god's filter it's just that you should someday I'll, I'll show you i'm starting to use them on social media and that kind of stuff and uh because they make great backdrops and uh, to me again it's about the nature and about being there and letting it all go and, and it was it was beautiful it was it was just great, great to get away and see friends um you know we're all vaccinated now so um i did wear <laughs> this is my new i think i did wear a mask and my lovely skin um but i had it down here because i had sunglasses on sometimes i don't know you but it's like i can't see anything and i'm all fogged up <laughs> yes <laughs> and, uh, yeah exactly and i wonder why did my chin get oh that's right i was wearing the mask mostly down <laughs> wearing the mask yes <laughs> it's it's uh, in New Jersey here. I think we are one of two states that still has a lot of stipulations. But my mom and I actually walked and went out to dinner last night mm -hmm. and didn't know what to do because we wanted to sit outside. But you still have to go inside to check in about getting a table. So you have to put the mask on. Yeah. And the funny thing is no one in the literally no one in the restaurant is wearing a mask except for the people who work there. So I said to the the hostess, I said, are we supposed to wear masks or not? And she said, have you been vaccinated? And I said, yes. Yeah. She said, we don't care. Wear a mask, don't wear a mask. So we sat outside and didn't wear a mask. So that, yeah. that was it. But you know, you know what I want to talk to you, have you talk to us about is okay. the business of being a pet psychic. So I think what people maybe don't really consider is you are a psychic. That is a, a, a God given gift, but you also are running a business and wow. right. 
you know? So would you share a little bit about that with us? Because you are a woman, you are a woman with a business and you are psychic. So those are kind of three cool things all going together. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, um, it was scary. It was scary going public just because again, I kept it close to the vest and with, um, my, my, closest family members. I didn't even talk about it with my siblings. Um, so yeah, you kind of go public on anything, on anything you're doing. Um, you want to be a public speaker. You want to, you know, like you, uh, even though we're communicators and we talk easily in public and that type of stuff, there's still that element of, you know, am I crazy? Is anybody going to want to hear what I have to say? Is anybody going to buy what I, I'm doing? And I really challenge you to let that go. If you feel you have a message and you really have a path to to deliver it. And I've met every type of, I'm sure there's millions I haven't met, but I, I'm, I'm really connected with a lot of business uh, owners and people because I surround myself with all that training from a lot of coaches and, and willed it down to the ones that really resonate with me, which many have been on the show already. The hardest thing for me is I have people in my world that do business completely different. They're very by the book. They're very, oh, this is what you have to do. This is after you write up. This is how many posts you have to have. And you have to be on this platform, this platform, this platform. You have to, you know, you know what I'm talking about. You have to have 10 and 2 a, a post. People will forget. You have to, have to, have to. Well, I'm kind of outside the box already <laughs> with just... What I'm doing is being a psychic and um, intuitive. I'm an empath, so I really bounce off of what people feel. I write what I feel. So you'll see the stuff behind me. This was helped and put together, in, and I had uh, Sunil on the show. Uh, uh, that feeling, the whole group that was together for the workshop I was at, I talked about why and what I do, and those people said, listening to what you said, here's what you should put out there. I do a lot of posts and words that get you think about, hmm, I hadn't thought about it that way. I haven't dreamed about it that way because I want you to look outside it a box that you think it is. I need to train my animal this way. I need to have strict rules. I Whatever your I need is. And maybe not. So I've done that with marketing. I have really learned so much. You and I both know that not everybody's a good fit. Not everybody, you would have them, their bio is going to be fabulous to have them as a guest. And then it tanks. But maybe you decide to try it one more time. I'm a big fan of three. So first time I did ads. I did it exactly, for example, let me give you Facebook for an example. I did exactly what Facebook's algorithm was. And I set the age and the this and this and this, and I did boys and girls and all of that kind of stuff. And it totally tanked. It totally tanked. But I looked at why. Um, men are not my not my demographic. Yes, I have, I have men, male clients, but it's 1% or less. Um, they don't ask for this, the kind of help. And they aren't possibly as intuitive as a woman and see the problem in a different way. So I do have male clients, but I don't have many. So do I market to men? No. And everybody says, oh, well, that, you know, it's not good. It's not, no, no. Let's be clear on, you can only be good for so many people or so, I'm not the only psychic out there. I'm definitely not the only pet psychic out there. You might've only met me, but I, it's just not true. Can I help everybody? No. Do I want to help everybody? I mean, you know, spiritually, sure, but that's not real. That's not realistic. Am I going to bond with everybody? No, and and I'm not out for that. I am out to find the person that that I'm supposed to help, that is in my path, and and or finds me organically and that kind of stuff. So I am going to show up. I am going to test. But when you, if you saw how I put together an ad, it's going to be women. It, they're going to be over 30 or 40 years old. And it's, and this took me years to learn, but you test it, you test the water and, and don't spend thousands of dollars on it. Find where your niche is. And, and there's no reason to 
dabble once in a while, but I really, 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 really encourage you to do you. And if it's weird, guess what? You'll collect all the other weird people and, and you'll, got, you'll be a fabulous tribe. <laughs> so I really want to encourage you to listen to your heart, listen to your mind, and then have an open heart and mind for change because I do change and I do up things and I do change things around. But I also know money is always finite if I want to do a good job. So I center on what I can do and hope that if there's somebody that needs my help who's a couple or or a man or i don't know a frog they can call too it's a very strange conversation but <laughs> they don't even need a phone but um a very small brain that that you are open to that of course i'm not saying exclude anybody but when you're starting out jacqueline you and i both know you can't do it all it, you don't have either the capacity or the money or the experience and you shouldn't because then you just water down the message so I got help with the signs you see behind, but I, I couldn't believe it. Let me go this way with that, that graphic, of course, I don't, I don't own it, but, um, I found it because look at all the different animals in, in my graphic. I've got a lizard, I've got a bird, I've got a, because this is who I am. I, I would don't want a picture that was just, uh, dogs and cats. Well, I was a little bored. And if you look at the pastel colors, this is who I am. So I, I am on a, um, a speaking panel. I'm one of the instructors. And so the founder of the speaking panel is, um, she's actually based in England. And so she was talking about one sheets. You know, when you're a public speaker, you have the one sheet where mm -hmm. it talks about what you can talk about. And so I had taken an advanced um, class for speakers to put that one sheet together. And the woman who books um, speakers. She was the one who was our coach at that point to critique all ours. So she, she and I start talking. She said, well, when I got your one sheet, I was thinking, what? Cause it was really, really bright colors. It was not that professional, lovely background. Like you have, <laughs> it was those, those animal colors. And so she said, before I wrote you back, I went into your website and looked at what you have. And then I came back and now I'm ready to give you my opinion. She said, this is you. This is, these are the colors I see everywhere you go. You're fun. You're, you got these crazy animals everywhere. It's on your business card. And I said, she said, then I was able to say, okay, this time pastels and bright colors work on your one sheet because it is who they're hiring. And they get that feel from the moment they look at your one sheet without reading any of it. And so, when the instructor was saying she had the typical um um what is it what do i want uh, example up on her page and i said well this is what mine looks like and the first speaking hiring speaking advisor said had some very strange things to say about it and so i left it open so we could continue a conversation with her students and yes. i said so anybody guess what's wrong with my one sheet and so everybody had a guess of, of what it, none of it was correct. But and the five the, the instructor said, okay, okay, okay. Tell us what's wrong with the one sheet because it looks great. And I said, it's too bright. So people are looking at lime green and they're going, whoa, that's really bright. And then she went and looked at my website and all these colors here and it's on my, and I put my business card in the next post. And I said, and this is on my business card. So this is who I am. You're hiring who I am and what I'm going to talk about. But so I your branding was consistent. Exactly. And that's what you have to do. Consistent with your heart, consistent with your message, consistent who you are, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. If you know you're right, it'll pan out with clients or it won't. And we can make a pivot. I could always pivot. But you and I both know, like, if I see wrapping in a little bubbly thing anywhere, immediately I think of you. I don't have to see the picture with you because you have made it something that my mind catches as a graphic. So these little animals, animals <laughs> are on everything. And, and I'm, I'm able to move them on onto everything because it's, it's who I am. And I can talk to all the pets. There's not just dogs and cats in that picture. So it was perfect when I found it. So yeah, you, you bring up a stuff. really good point. point. I hear, I hear myself twice now. Twice now. <laughs> I only hear it once, so I'm good. <laughs> okay. So I hired someone to develop a new logo for me. Mm. And I I thought to myself, I don't love the logo that I have now. I don't mm. love it. 
but it's out there so much that oh the thought of changing it to another one. And, and the other one, the guy spent a lot of time, he came up with five or six different versions and I didn't really love any of them either. Mm -hmm. So when I see it now, again, I don't love it. I love the theme song, the music. I love that. Uh, but I don't love the logo, but I'm not going to change it because it's out there and it's part of the brand. Well, and just think just, okay, let's, let's use history that you and I would know when Coke changed, their logo or whatever. I mean, can you imagine the billions of dollars they went through to change? And then yes. did, it, did it not go well and they changed back or, or or some nonsense? That's a vague memory. But it's just like, think about it. If Nike changed their logo, even just the swish, everybody go, what are you wearing? Nikes. That's not Nike. Because right. it's too late. <laughs> it's too late. It's out there. Now, I, I definitely don't have the following you have and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But Again, that's why, obviously, I, I was supposed to say, if I saw the word wrapping in red anywhere, I'm not going to think wrapping paper. I'm going to think <laughs> you. I'm going to think Dr. Jacqueline because that's what images create memories because you create a feeling. I don't care if it's love, hate, disinterest. Uh, it's okay. It'll create a memory of Oh, that's that podcast I went I went to, I listened to it. She had some good stuff. I should go back to that. So even if you put rapping with Dr. Jacqueline and your face wasn't there and you had somebody else, everybody would still think of you. So if you need to, of course, but you realize the work because <laughs> you're so bored and have so much free time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have so much time to do that. Yes. <laughs> this subtle hint, hint here, you're killing my neck. But it's like, no, don't do it. No, if, I'm not doing it. Yeah, if you can tolerate it. So that's why you go into logos really carefully. You go into fonts really carefully and you go into color schemes really carefully. So when I got the jumping animals and all that kind of stuff, it's like, this is terrific because I resonate with this and I should have a feeling about it the first time I see it. And then guess what? I'm going to project that feeling to everybody else because I'm proud of, I love my business cards. I absolutely adore my business cards. And, you know, I, I have the animals on the, the front side with all these. Oh, that's great. And on the back, it just simple because everything you want to know about me is on my website. I yes. literally just give the website because everyone's like, just give me your phone number. No, because you and I both know we're not answering that phone all day long. Because <laughs> <laughs> I get trapped, and you probably do too, in the point of people saying, oh, let me just ask you this one question. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So I get it all the time. People reach out. Do you have just five minutes? Listen, I'd love to have five minutes, but I don't have five minutes because, as you know, I'm doing 17 shows, and I have a whole team of people. Where are they? Yeah. Oh, hi. Oh, yeah. That, yes, that's right. It's a team of me, a team of one. And I'm so launching see, a have our signs, our logos, and our fake buildings. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I had people ask me um, if this was New York, and I'm so happy that you have a billboard in New York. And, you know, funny story I had, uh, I'm not going to say who, but I had a, a company call me and they wanted to put me on a billboard in New York. And I said, well, first of all, thank you. But no one's in New York. I mean, no one's where they wanted to put it near Times Square or something. No, wow. people, people had left. And by the way, we need $10,000. Yeah, so, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> you, we need $10,000 for you to be on the billboard. And I said, I, I don't need to be on a billboard. Yeah. So that's why I think this is funny. I, this is wherever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, yeah. Don't, we don't do this. this, this the, op the opposite way. The opposite. Yeah, exactly. Because you're over there. But no, you're yeah. over there. <laughs> right, you're there. It's, it's the exact opposite. I don't know why. Uh, but I wanted to let our audience know that we are uh, going to be closing the show a little bit early today. Right. I have to meet with a guest um, who's performing at on our 6 o'clock show. Uh, his name is John Christian, and he's going to be singing a Garth Brooks song called If Tomorrow Never Comes. Oh, so we've got to do a, a sound check because I've got two shows after this. So thank you for your graciousness, Amina, and letting me close the show Absolutely. early. I've got to work with our working girls. And and again, I, I have the phone number now. I assume it doesn't change. If it's okay on, on the live days, that we'll go ahead and put that. Um, what I want to get to topic-wise is end of life. That was, you know, we, you and I always get on something and I'm absolutely thrilled to go wherever we're supposed to be. But uh, right now I'm dealing with a lot of clients who are dealing with um, 
when to call end of life. And I really believe we shouldn't be having to make this decision, but with our pets, we are. So let check back in with us. We're going to have all kinds of guests. Um, but right now, I, I really want to take your call and do some free readings um, because that's my give back. So please check us out and call in. Or I'd rather hear your voice. So I prefer your being an empath. I want to hear your voice. I can tell from a written, but then we can ask more questions. So check in on Fridays, 1230 in Pacific Standard Time. And I'd love to hear you guys all call in. Um, I'm putting the phone number across the screen now if you want to write it down for next week. I did. I did when, okay. you, when we to got the people it. Out there to, their, to our audience. Uh, the number for our audience is 609-961-1699. It's the same phone number for all of our shows. So we'd love to hear from you next week. Um, and I'm going to wish you a very happy weekend. You too. And uh, thank you. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Absolutely. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. I appreciate you being here. As I mentioned, it's a banner broadcasting day for me today. Eight shows. I'm very excited because everybody has showed up big. My co-hosts, all the guests, people are being so authentic and transparent with what's going on in their lives. And it's just about people helping people. That's what this platform is all about. So thank you for your following and thank you for reaching out. Thank you for the emails that I get from people. And thank you to all of my guests and to my co-hosts. I do have an announcement in reference to one of my shows with a co-host. Uh, it's all about dating. That's our show that's on Thursdays at 4 p.m. Eastern time, which is 9 p.m. British summertime. Lisa Manioki is retiring from the program. She's been an amazing wonderful co-host. She's a great friend. Uh, she's got some other things that she's working on. And so Lori Mendelson will be taking her place. Lori is my co-host on the variety show and she's a dating coach, dating expert, And uh, her website is smartfunnysingle.com. So that's all for now. I look forward to seeing you in a little while when we have stories of hope, inspiration, and overcoming adversity. And my guest is Rita Smith. And then after that, as I mentioned, we will have John Christian, who will be singing his heart out to us. I'm told that uh, women fall to their knees when he sings. So get ready to fall. We'll see you soon. Thank you. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.